Come on, probably had one of the biggest Grammy nights. Yeah, in, we did. That history. was way back in '82. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, five Grammys in one night. What was it Nine. like? Nine. Yeah. Won five <laughs> Grammys. <laughs> Let me go for my straight. Wait. Yeah, that's all right. It's, 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 yeah, I think okay. you know that we won uh, the, the collectively. Grammy, yeah. yeah, and I won one for best uh, R&B song for "Turn Your Love Around" that I wrote for uh, George Benson with Jay Graydon and. Uh, Bill Champlin. Well, there you go. That's the other thing. A lot of people don't realize how many songs you've written for other people. Well, I have. I've written a lot of songs. Yeah. For other I wrote That's... the tube stuff, you know, Talk to You yeah. Later, and She's a Beauty with uh, Foster and Champlin. Once in a million girls. The Weibel, the legendary Fee Weibel. Once in a million girls. He was a great singer, actually. He still is. Yeah. And so are you. So, yeah, as a singer, I can, no, I'm listen, like a, this is what a guitar this, player that can sing a little this bit. This is I what I'm no trying fly. to get at. You're a singer. I'm like, no, yeah, I do you, it because I have singer. to. You're a good singer. You sing on key. You yeah. have, you have uh, control. You're like Clapton <laughs> to me. Clapton's oh. a great singer. You're a great singer. But uh, everyone, if you say Steve Lukather, oh, he's a great guitar player. People don't talk about you as a singer. You say Eric Clapton, he's a great guitar player. I think. I you, think it's just because I, I sing only because I have to. And if there's something, a little break for, the, for Joseph. Oh, you singer. sing good. Thanks, man. I try. I mean, sometimes it's live, it's loud, and you, you know, you miss one. You know, there's no frets in the voice. You know. You don't want to be a full-time singer. No, person. man. <laughs> but no. About an hour and a half into the set, you're going, oh, oh God, let's dude. You know? you know, yeah. I mean, I have a lot of respect, man. Especially at the level where you got to be screaming and shit. And you've always been very consistent, so, you know, I'm, I'm deep respect. You know. What were you? Like listening to growing up, like what made you Beatles, what, who you are today? The Beatles. Beatles was my on switch to life. It's like the Wizard of Oz where it goes like black and white to color. I was like, you know, eight years old, seven years old, eight, and I saw it on Ed Sullivan. I said, George Harris, I want to be that guy. Who makes that noise? You know, I loved them all. Wow. When we all saw the Beatles, it was like it life was the changed. life changed. Yeah. Yeah, and we followed them until the Stones came, and then the British invasion, and then of course you got Beck, Clapton, and Page. And that, that was my that, that, tri too. that that my tri that triumvirate started a whole thing with guitar, you know what I mean? And then as that time got later on, it was the fusion guys would come in, and that and then Eddie fucking blew the roof off of everything, ah. you know? And, and and everybody did that ad nauseum to the point where Ed's going like, you know, I didn't mean to start a monster here. Who's the best musician though that you've ever played with? Today? Who who is the guy? I mean, you've played with all these great guys. <sighs> I haven't played with a lot Ooh, of these guys. Well, I got to play with Miles. That was oh. pretty cool. Uh, Wayne Shorter and Herbie Hancock at the Tokyo Jazz Festival. That was pretty heavy. Uh, I get the chance to move to different... I play with the funk guys with Quincy and all that stuff, and then I can play with you with you guys, cranking up the... You know, I'm really basically a rock and roll guitar player that studied theory and you harmony got, and... You, you, you know, take it and, one step beyond. And I make up my own parts in all the records and do this shit. So, I mean, it's like I can read, but it's like, you know, they never hired me because of my excellent reading, you know? They'd write out all the parts for everybody else and they'd give me chord symbols because I'd come up with parts that they That's interesting think that you can read because you don't play like a guy that reads. Because you can ad lib. You, a lot of guys that well, read. Well, I started that way. Yeah. Reading was done out of necessity to become a studio musician. How many sessions have you done probably in your oh, life? Man. Toto I, played on a lot of people's records, right? We did. The whole band. I mean, like, you know, you thousands. <laughs> Literally. That's unbelievable. If you look at the back of my book, my, my book, The Gospel According to Luke, shameless plug. It's so a number one, five stars. Uh, I explained the whole thing. It's in, in, in detail about all that, you know. Just how, how, what a wonderful time that was. We never knew what we were going to play, who we were going to play with, or who we were going to play, who the artist was, or you know, contractor. Go, yeah, Capital, um, Monday through Friday, 12 to 6. Okay, I'll be there. Barbara Streisand is there. You know? We're doing that well, that day. Being a rock star is, is a pretty lofty dream, you know what I mean? <laughs> So you always had to have, well, if I can't be that, I still want to play. So, like, you know, let me get into the studio thing because I was so enamored by it. you Playing with all these great, I'm sitting next to Elton. He's playing Leave On for me while we're in uh, Barely's Alps at Super Bear Studios in 79. Good when good. you get a call and you get, like, you know, Quincy Jones needs your Elton wants you or, you know, Neil Diamond wants to do a record. I want to play with the Diamond. One of the greatest songs. He's so profound with it, like, simple songs like, I am, my, it just gives me goosebumps. There's a lot of people that have longevity for a reason. Yeah.